originally from Los Angeles area, made his home in South Carolina a couple of decades ago, gratefully, and has become very embedded as a business leader in this state, has done deals all over the world, deeply involved with the Urban Land Institute on their executive committee, has probably helped Michelin site every facility that they've got globally. Um, and Steve got involved as the crucial development partner in all of this. And, and so again, very unique roles. Let's start with, um, and that, that's terrific background on this. Um, next, we're gonna shift to Steve Navarro, the developer. Uh, thank you for having me, appreciate it. I, I wanna, I've got a couple of observations and then I'll slowly bring it back to um, this here. Uh, more specifically, the first one is, this is the most serious I've ever seen you guys. <laughs> Usually they're a lot more fun than this. <laughs> and that's one of the things that attract us to us. You know, we're passionate about our real estate, passionate about building and, and, mm -hmm. and um, creating product. But one of the reasons why we are so passionate about it is because we, we enjoy what we do. We enjoy learning about our clients. And that's an important part of the chemistry and kind of the DNA for success. And they're so serious that I'm wondering what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Um, another observation is, thankfully, I didn't, other than uh, some of Noah's comments, you didn't say anything that I didn't already know, which means I was trying to be a good listener and along the way, and, um, and hopefully that helped in, in trying to make some of this uh, work. Sure. My third observation is um, I was sitting over here having lunch, and I saw on my phone that I have a meeting tomorrow with an un unscheduled meeting with Knox White, and somebody wants to introduce me to, so I'm hoping that it's going to be another project Repeat like this. Repeat performance. Yeah. Um, and my fourth observation is there's, there's 180 real estate, corporate real estate consultants that are over at the Francis Marion. Actually, they've been there for the last three days and they, they are all dispersing, going back around the world um, today. And we've been introducing them to economic development and to South Carolina and uh, Jim Newsom spoke and we talked about the movement of goods and Pat McCrory with uh, Palmetto Rail. Bobby Hitt and I did a program, I understand Bobby was here maybe an hour or two ago, he and I did a program on what makes South Carolina from the public sector and the private sector point of view and observations. Um, Joe Riley spoke, it's just, they were blown away by South Carolina. So one of the people that sat up here before us said, you've got a great state, you've got some momentum. I wanna make sure everyone appreciates just how, what a fertile ground this is for companies like Softbox to come to and and investment firms like NOAA's to come and invest in. Most other states do not have that same kind of DNA and that open for businesses. So it makes it a lot easier for us to do our job. Um, I knew that John was gonna talk about the process, so I won't bore you with the process a second time of how we got to where we were in terms of finished products. I just thought I'd make a couple of, of um, observations that might be helpful for you if you're thinking about about expanding or relocating or, or investing in, in a new facility. Um, very few companies like yours can fit into a, a speculative industrial building. And if you can, it's usually the cheapest way to go. Ultimately, it may not be the cheapest way in the long run, but first cost in it usually is. Um, very few companies do what, for example, I think Sam, you, you mentioned Michelin, you know, what we were able to do with Michelin, we'd go to a market and, you know, one of the last projects I did there was a 3 million, 3.2 million square foot logistics center in Chicago. But we went there with a full set of plans, the engineers, the research, everything had already been done, dropped the plans, the plans down, had them bid, and we knew exactly what our first cost was gonna be. Most companies like yours fall kind of somewhere in the middle. And that's really what we, what we find, you know, when, when Wayne talks about global strategy and positioning and how North America fits into that, and John talks about the actual operations and the certain KPIs that he has to hit once this new facility opens. And when Noah talks about the investment and his return on investment and his expectations, it's really, really hard to find a building that meets all of that for you. And, and while real estate can be a large part of your balance sheet in terms of cost with labor and probably in your case, the materials, um, it's not about the building, it's really about the people and the processes that are going on inside it. So when, whether we talk about life sciences, whether we talk about, uh, as Stephanie Yarborough said, uh, making things. You know, we're, you're gonna go see Boeing in the next, I think, tomorrow. And I, one of the things that will strike you about that is, it's really not about airplanes, it's about research, technology, innovation, advanced materials, and logistics. And you're gonna hear that. And that's really exactly what you guys are doing in your, in your building. And so it's important to have a building 
that can meet those expectations, and we try to understand that. So one of the first things that I told these guys when I met them was, no, knowing what I know and knowing what I felt like they did not know about the journey they were ready, getting ready to go on to, choosing someone like us will not be your cheapest option initially. But in the long run, if we work together, if we're on the same side of the table, we have the, the opportunity, you have the opportunity and the potential to create a greater return on investment and meet those KPIs and increase your output. And so, you know, hopefully, hopefully that's happening. Um, again, without going through the process of what we did and how we did it, I really tried to look at this as if I were you, what would I, would be, what would I be looking for? Where do, I, where do I get started? And certainly a, you know, a reputable partner on our side, somebody that you can trust. And it's easy for me to say, the first time I met, you know, Wayne and, um, and John, and when Sam brought him, you know, trust me, I'll take care of you. You know, that, we all know that doesn't fly. You have to prove yourself. So do your homework with who you're doing business with. Make sure they have expertise in that area, not just in the real estate business or in the industrial development business, but in the process management and understanding what you're doing and being able to take you through that and having empathy about some of the things and the challenges that you're going to go through. We knew that if we were delayed, for example, on this project, once I had a better idea on what it was we were going to deliver, if we were going to be late, it was going to be because of internal decisions because it's, it's, it's hard for an international company to go from John to the global positioning, back to the financial guys, back to Wayne, back to John. You know, and we, we need decisions sometimes in real time and sometimes it takes a month. And so we, you, you, know, you try to factor that in. Um, credibility is important. I see Mark Ferris here. We spent a lot of time with uh, the GADC, and they were wonderful about incentives for a, a small company and a small investment uh, in terms of some of the th other things that uh, they work on. Mm -hmm. But we knew that many of the incentives, that the non-legislative incentives that they would be asking for really run through the land in terms of a FILO or multi-county industrial park, property tax benefits, and those kinds of things, which require the, the owner of the property's um, cooperation. And so for us to go hand in hand to GADC or to the um, South Carolina Department of Commerce and for them to be able to look and say, yeah, we know they can deliver. Now let's focus on why we're here, which is softbox. I think that helps. So I think if you're looking, not just us, a lot of great companies that are out there, they do that. But it's important that you deal with somebody that has credibility, that is process driven, not just with its program. I've got, I don't know how to go backwards on this. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through this, but I'm just going to show you. It's important that there is a process so that we can take them through a step-by-step -step timetable of not only here's what we're going to do, here's how long it's going to take. And then we actually gave them a much more detailed Gantt chart that said, here's how much time you have to make decisions once we get going if you want to be in on time. Um, so understand, having a process and understanding that you have a process and being sensitive to that as well. And then the final thing on that is accountability and transparency. Um, John can't make decisions on the fly and expect Noah to, uh, and I'm just kind of going from one side on the ground to ultimately the financial investment, Noah to accept that unless they feel like they have full accountability <coughs> on what's going on and, what, and, and, and kind of what their options were. So we made a promise to them as we went along. We would give you alternatives with expected outcomes along the way. And we'll probably try to tell you what that means in terms of cost, what that means in terms of time. You make the decision, you come back to us, and then we will implement it. And that's the program that we went through um, pretty much the whole way. We met in November. It took us about a month to kind of do the get comfortable dance. dance and you guys get comfortable with the site and with us. And then we sat down in earnest in December. And one of the first things we talked about was process and about half timeline and um, when we thought we could get this project done for them, we had to go down parallel, multiple paths in order to do that, legal, financial, um, process design, mm -hmm. incentives. And so the only way to do that, because it's a very substantial investment on everyone's part to do that, without having a lease agreement signed that's gonna commit all the parties for 10 or 20 years, was to, we asked them to sign a development services agreement. And that agreement outlined all of the pre-development work that would occur and the investment that it was going to take on our part and on their part to get to that point that if we got down 30 days down the road and we decided to shake hands and walk away because they didn't like the product or they didn't like the cost, then we could do that and we understood that we were all whole with that. So I think being upfront, 
good communication, understanding what you're going to get along the way, hopefully helped you, John, with, you know, with your partners. Um, final board approval was, was uh, given in, I think in, what was it, June? And we signed the lease and we started construction two or three weeks later and the ultimate result, I think because you guys were, were really organized with what you wanted and knew what you wanted inside, we came in on time, we came in on budget, we actually wrote you a check back to help you with some of your extra costs. And um, you know, it was, it was a pretty successful project. I didn't tell Wayne that. They don't all go that way. <laughs> oh, you didn't tell Wayne that? It was $7, Wayne. So great, great opening comments. And again, I think it's a terrific case study. Um, these projects come in all shapes and sizes, but you know, in this case, an international company, international strategy, an equity partner, out of Connecticut, you know, a guy in Oregon who decides to take the reins of this thing, a global president that's got to bless this and feel that it matches up with your goals for a global strategy. So Wayne, let me ask you all a couple of questions. With that perspective, being the president globally, operations around the world, what was the most important criteria for you to get comfortable with, okay, looks like South Carolina is gonna be it because we, we're, we're clearly making a bet that this state is going to be a fertile place for us to grow this company and hit some pretty bold goals. Yeah. Uh, well, it all starts with, uh, in business, uh, local relationships. Uh, and I felt that John already had the experience in South Carolina uh, personally committing to living here, so he knew the people. Uh, he had already networked, uh, thanks to your efforts, with the right people in the state as well as in Greenville. Uh, when I, I first started coming to Greenville, as you know, the first criteria was, did they have a hockey team? And they <laughs> did, so that, that checked that box. Uh, that checked that box for me. The Swamp Rats were, met my, my, uh, my desire Rabbit. list. Uh, it, uh, it, from the first meeting I had when I came to Greenville, uh, I felt like people cared. Uh, and then uh, having met Steve, uh, he was a different kind of builder for me. I have done build-outs before, and uh, usually I'm hiring New Jersey uh, nasty people to hunt them down to get them to do their jobs. And Steve uh, was uh, all over everything all the time. As, uh, uh, as our project manager, we actually didn't have to hire. Uh, and then when we were on the phone with the, the, uh, the, the folks from the state and, uh, and the community, it was all about how they could help us. Uh, I've, I've, I've fallen in love with Greenville because of the, the employees that John's hired really felt like uh, they really appreciated wanting to work for a global brand so that they could count on their employer for a while. And then uh, the vision all along was the Americas. And so just to test it out, we brought our Latinos up uh, to do uh, training in Greenville, uh, and they just fell in love with the U.S. team. Uh, we just hired a, a woman who is a, 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 a graduate from uh, uh, in the country of Columbia uh, um, Engineering School who had moved to Greenville because she wanted to be part of the bigger world. Uh, and then uh, John hired a, a, a package engineer out of Clemson who actually was out of state and wanted to move back home. So when you get all that humanity coming together of people who care and can get the job done uh, and do it on time and on budget, then it's easy to go to NOAA and say, this is a great investment and, uh, and the returns will just come. And our clients just loved the strategy because we're right in the middle of, uh, of where they are. Oh, that's man, actually very encouraging and generous comments to um, John, what could have we done better in South Carolina? What would have made your life easier? Honestly, I, I'm not sure I would have changed anything. You know, some of those, some of the stories, some of the challenges uh, make it just that, make you appreciate it more. Um, uh, I was very happy to move off Pelham Road in the traffic out there. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I, I'm not sure at this point anything. Okay. I think you guys, uh, top to bottom, hit the mark. Uh, the introductions, the, the business community came together and helped solve some of those problems. And introduction to Steve, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I would go back and say, wow, we missed there, or I really need it more there, and the community let me down. Right. So I would say, really, nothing. Well, you know, you, I think you're also confirming a point I tried to make on the front end. Relationships matter, maybe more than they appear to on paper. Yeah, and, it's hard um, to quantify that at times, yep. but I, I truly believe that's what made the complete difference in this project. Okay. 
No, I'm going to finish with you. I'm going to jump over you and come back. A couple of questions there. Steve, what, you know, you've, you've done some of these rodeos around the world and for a lot of different industries. What was maybe one of the most unique aspects of this project for you um, that might differentiate it from some other deals you've done? And I'll go ahead and give you the two-parter. And did this increase your interest in the life science industry and maybe more life science clients in your portfolio? Uh, well, I will circle back to what I said. I'll ask your, answer your second question first and say the life sciences business is really becoming our business in South Carolina, very much with advanced manufacturing and, and advanced materials and automation. So these, these industries are really, really starting to look a lot alike when you ask what's important to you, what kind of talent do you need around you, and what does it take to become successful? And so, yeah, very, we're very interested in it. And we're hoping that life sciences is an industry that continues to grow. It's been a fast growing one for the last four or five years uh, for South Carolina. We, you know, we certainly hope so. But I think that because we've been so successful with companies like Boeing and now most recently with Volvo and with others, and they're looking for very, very similar talent and, and have the same needs, I think that'll help propel our life sciences business as well. As far as uniqueness to the building um, and this project, the project went exceptionally well. So that would be unique. They don't always go that easy. Um, but I would also say, similar to what, in fact, I will steal from the Honorable uh, Mayor Riley what he said yesterday, which was, um, it's amazing how lucky you can be when you work so hard. And, and John, even though he said it'd be nice to get a project manager on our side, they worked really hard to understand what we were doing so that they could then lay out the inside of that and begin to imagine how was our system going to work. And so they made changes along the way that were really helpful. So that ended up, and I'm sure the KPIs, like you said, have been you know, better than you had expected. But it's really because of you were lucky in that the building ended up being how you wanted, which meant you worked, guys really worked really hard to do that. And, and that's really what made it unique. Okay, my, my last question to, to Noah. Noah, you, 